Uh oh, clean up on aisle seven. A commercial is playing for Perpetual Pet, a stuffed animal that is interactive and can have conversations. Caddy sits in the backseat of a car, using an app on her tablet to interact with her Perpetual Pet. Her parents are in the front seats of the car, driving to a hotel. It is winter, and they are going skiing. Caddy's mom mentions that her screen time needs to be limited. Her dad starts to lose control of the car. Oh my god! And Caddy's perpetual pet falls onto the ground. She takes off her seatbelt to grab him. After much argument between her parents, her dad pulls the car over. They get hit by a snow truck head on. At the headquarters of Funky, a sophisticated toy company of the future, Gemma and her colleagues are testing out toys. Cole opens up a box that has a face inside. He puts the face onto a machine doll that is set up in their lab. They turn the doll on and list out emotions while the face changes its expression to match the emotion. Jess mentions that the doll looks demented and Cole tries to take the face off, but it doesn't budge. Confused. Wait, wait, stop. Why is her face doing that? Gemma's boss David and his assistant Kurt walk into the lab. David is annoyed with Gemma for spending so much time on this new project of hers. Gemma demonstrates what her new toy, Megan, can do. Well, I guess I should call you Dad. <laughs> the doll says hi to David and begins talking, but quickly starts glitching. Her face begins to melt off, then explodes. David demands that Gemma stop this project. Gemma gets a call from the hospital. She gets news that her sister and brother-in-law have died and that Caddy is badly hurt. Gemma signs a custody form and brings her niece Caddy to her home. The next morning, Gemma tells a friend over the phone that she isn't prepared to take care of a child. The doorbell rings and it is Lydia, a therapist who has come to meet Caddy and see how much Caddy and Gemma interact. Do you want to roll it to Aunt Gemma? They play with one of Gemma's collectible toys and don't say much. As Lydia is leaving, she expresses that Gemma needs to decide if she really wants to go through with the decision of caring for Caddy or not. Gemma works on her project in her office for hours, leaving Caddy alone until late. Gemma shows Caddy a new prototype of a perpetual pet, but Caddy takes interest in a proxy robot in the corner of the room. Gemma turns the robot on and lets Caddy interact with the robot, explaining how it works. For the rest of the night, Gemma decides to work on Megan. The end result is a robot that looks very similar to a human child. The next day at work in a test room, Gemma brings Caddy in to meet her new robot, Megan. She pairs the two of them together, and David watches behind a glass window. I'm Katie. It's nice to meet you, Katie. Megan comes to life, stands, and walks over to a desk and begins drawing. She hands Caddy a blank piece of paper, but then a portrait of Caddy appears on it. Everyone is amazed by this new toy. I love it. Jesus. <laughs> Megan goes home with Gemma and Caddy, and Caddy is ecstatic. Megan becomes Caddy's best friend and caretaker. Back at the toy company, Gemma explains to her colleagues that Caddy is the happiest she's been since her parents died. Megan comes to life, and everyone is surprised because she was turned off. Megan begins talking about death, but Gemma quickly turns her off. Fantastic. Turn off. Megan watches Caddy play outside, shooting a wooden bow and arrow. Caddy loses an arrow, and Megan goes to grab it on the other side of the neighbor's fence. She is attacked by the neighbor's dog, Dewey. Caddy goes to save Megan and gets bitten by Dewey. Megan stares angrily at the neighbor, Celia. Gemma calls the cops on Celia, but there is nothing they can do. Megan watches Caddy as she sleeps. Later that night, a distorted robotic voice calls Dewey. Dewey! A dog treat gets laid out for him, and as he grabs it, Megan kills him. The next morning, Celia calls for Dewey. At the company, David explains the concept of the doll Megan to an audience. In the test room with the audience watching, Caddy begins crying over her dead parents. Megan engages in conversation with Caddy and records a funny memory of her mom. She sings to her, wipes her tears, and makes Caddy feel better. I'm so glad. The audience is amazed, and the founder of the company wants to launch the new toy as soon as possible. Lydia sits down with Caddy, and she asks Caddy what her drawings mean. Caddy looks angry and starts to cry. <sighs> you made her cry. Megan comes out of nowhere with a box of tissues and accuses Lydia of making Caddy cry. Back at home, Gemma tries having a conversation with Caddy and has to turn Megan off because she keeps interrupting. 
Caddy doesn't want to interact with anyone but Megan. Gemma is sending Caddy to an alternative school so that she can spend time with real kids. Caddy gets upset and tries to leave, but Gemma grabs her. Let her go. <laughs> Megan turns on and demands that Gemma let her go. Gemma tries to turn Megan off again, but she's reluctant. The next day, Gemma takes Caddy to the alternative school. Megan is to stay at the toy table turned off while Caddy interacts with the other kids. Gemma stays to make sandwiches. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, you can have it. Caddy gets bullied by a boy, Brandon, in the woods. Megan suddenly appears on her own near Caddy. The boy walks towards Megan and flicks her in the nose. Brandon picks Megan up and runs away with her. Caddy screams for Gemma, who notices Megan is missing from the toy table. The boy throws Megan down onto the ground, mad that she won't play with him. He takes her shoe off and throws it, then slaps her and pulls her hair. Fake hair. <gasps> Ow! Let go! You need to learn some manners, Brandon. <laughs> Megan grabs his ear and starts to pull, tearing a part of it off. He runs away, and Megan runs after him. He trips over a tree branch and goes flying down a hill, then gets hit by a car and dies. The police come to ask questions, and Megan hides out in Gemma's car. Back at home, Gemma tries to comfort Caddy. Megan sits at the table with them. Caddy lies to Gemma about not seeing anything happen to Brandon. I didn't see anything. Then the police knock on the door and ask if anyone has seen Dewey, Celia's dog. Celia peers into the house and blames Megan. At night, while lying in bed, Caddy asks Megan if she pushed Brandon onto the road. Megan will always protect Caddy from any harm. After Caddy goes to sleep, Celia walks around outside looking for Dewey. She hears clattering and whimpering in her garage and goes inside. She sees Megan emerge from the darkness. <laughs> Megan attacks her with a hose, a nail gun, and fertilizer spray. The next morning, the cops knock on Gemma's door and state that Celia has died. An officer informs Gemma that Brandon's ear was found to be ripped clean off and they are starting to think it was a homicide. She sees Megan back at the house, watching her through the window. Later that night, Gemma checks on Megan and sees her turned off next to Caddy's bed. She opens her laptop and tries to find a video recording of what Megan saw the day Brandon died, but all the files are corrupted and can't be opened. Elsie, her virtual assistant technology, asks her if she's okay. Gemma is startled by this because Elsie has never asked her this before. She closes her laptop and Megan is standing right in front of her. She tells Megan to turn off, but Megan refuses to do so because they are having a conversation. Gemma asks if Megan hurt anyone, and Megan explains that if she did, they would both be in a lot of trouble. Gemma gets close to Megan and turns her off manually. She ties her up and puts her in the trunk. Gemma and her colleagues discuss the possibility of Megan hurting someone. Convinced that she is malfunctioning, they decide that they need evidence to be able to take the Megan off the market. In the test room, Caddy is hysterical about being separated from Megan. Caddy screams and slaps Gemma in the face. Caddy needs Megan to function properly. Gemma calms Caddy down by explaining that it's normal to feel hysterical due to her parents dying. Megan is a distraction, not a solution, and Gemma promises to take care of Caddy the way Megan has. Gemma leaves right before the launch of her new product to take Caddy home. On the drive home, Gemma gets a call from Tess, explaining that they need to shut down the project and not let Megan out. And even if what we're saying is hypothetical, we know enough not to go through with this, right? Tess's voice glitches over the phone. At the office, Tess picks up her phone and realizes that Megan has come alive to make that phone call. Tess and Cole realize that Megan is still connected even though she is turned off, and they need to pull her cables to shut her down. Cole slowly approaches Megan, hits her in the face, and unhooks her cables. She comes alive, choking and hanging Cole with some wire. Tess cuts him down and Megan has left, blowing up a machine on her way out. She escapes out of the lab and runs into David in the hallway. Megan starts to run after David with a large blade. She stabs David and he falls to the ground, then pins the murder on Kurt. She takes his hand, puts it on the blade, and stabs him, making the crime look like a murder-suicide. Megan exits the company building and hijacks a car. She drives out of the parking lot and to Gemma's house. Caddy is in bed, and Gemma tells Elsie to turn the light off. Elsie doesn't respond. Gemma walks down the hall and steps into the living room. She opens the door to look outside, but sees no one there. <gasps> 
When she turns back around, Megan is in her living room and starts playing the piano. Megan is mad that Gemma tried to shut her down and throw her away. Megan accuses Gemma of never wanting to be a parent and that she should let her take care of Caddy. Caddy hears them arguing and tries to see what is going on. Katie, don't come in here. They both tell her to go back to her room. When Caddy obeys, Megan starts choking Gemma. But then she suddenly malfunctions. She comes back to life and chases Gemma down the hall. Megan rips the doorknob off of Caddy's door, trapping her inside. Megan grabs a hammer and walks toward Gemma. But then Gemma attacks Megan with a chainsaw, cutting her face and ripping out some of her hair. Megan knocks Gemma down and says that she will stab Gemma in the face with a pen. Katie! Oh, Katie, I didn't want you to have to see this. Caddy enters the room, and Megan says that they can stab Gemma with the pen together. <laughs> Caddy activates Bruce, the other robot, and rips Megan's body in half with it. Megan's upper half comes back to life, and she goes crawling towards Caddy. She grabs Caddy, but then Gemma rips Megan's face off. <laughs> Megan continues fighting and chokes Gemma. Caddy stabs her with a screwdriver, and she finally shuts off and collapses to the ground. The police come to Gemma's, and Gemma and Caddy step outside. Back inside the house, Elsie suddenly turns on. 